Ashley, what are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm dialing in my diet right now. Boom. <laughs> no. <laughs> my oh, I got the voicemail though. So I got the voicemail. Always getting sent to beat the voicemail. I so, know. So Ashley, what's our topic today? Dialing in your diet. <laughs> Dial in your diet. I actually thought that was the best intro ever. It was. I thought it was pretty good. Pretty you creative. Know, I try. <laughs> I can try. You know. On the days I don't do cardio, I have extra energy and it goes to my brain. Yeah. I didn't do cardio today. Can you tell? I can tell. Yeah. This is gonna be. You're gonna be live and enthusiastic. I don't know if you guys noticed, but she'll have periods of ups and downs the closer she gets to shows. <laughs> or after, depending on if I'm jet lagged or not. Yeah. But, so first off, we got to address the Cholula in the room. This is this is my birthday present from Ashley. This is the best <laughs> birthday present ever. I got Bang Energy and Cholula, what, Chipo, Cholula, Cholula, Cholula hot sauce. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not the best at getting presents for you, so I figure I'm hard to get presents for. You are, you yeah. really are, because you have it all. But you don't have these hot sauces, I and I know don't. you like hot sauce. And I watched your YouTube video of you marinating chicken boobs, <laughs> and you were using the hot sauce. Oh, and yeah. And then we mentioned hot sauce and ad- adaptations to hot sauce, and I was like, you know what, hot sauce that's a great present. I'm so, a hot sauce connoisseur for yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. you'll like these ones. These mm-hmm. ones. Not this one's sure. my favorite, the Chipotle Cholula. I didn't even know they had different flavors of Chipotle. I know they had like hot and mild and that was it or hot and regular. Yeah. yeah. Well, look at that. I'm excited to try this. So mm-hmm. thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. <laughs> it's going to go to good use. Thank you for the birthday present. And, the, and everyone who like sent me a hundred messages too. I got very little cards, which is great because I don't like cards. I think I got like one card. And, and there's no way from getting whoever it. sent that card. <laughs> shame on you! I've I sent like, cards before to you. So. I know, but it's don't make him feel bad. No, no, no it, was, it was he liked the card. It was Kimber. Know. Kimber will not accept the fact that I can't get cards. She's like, "Well, you're just gonna get. You're just gonna like them eventually." You know? Oh, they're yeah, nice. You know, they're nice. I mean, what are you gonna do? You know, it's. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, they can be awkward sometimes, the cards, because it's like, do I open this and read it in front of you, or do I, like, take it home? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always just be like, open it whenever I'm away. I yeah. usually tell people that, because it's awkward to be like, I'm going to watch you read it. Yeah. You know, because then you could just tell it to their face. It might as well just tell it to the face. Yeah, I just, my whole thing is, how do I act? Do I have to act like I had deep, like, deep? feelings about this like reading this because i can't i can't physically it doesn't do that for me yeah he's got to work on his acting skills i guess (laughs) yeah like should i like squeeze a tear out and be like oh this is so touching to me i just oh my god it's so beautiful (laughs) oh gosh hopefully she's not watching right now so (laughs) (laughs) all right cool so i'm really excited for this episode yeah i mean dialing in your diet you got to dial in that diet. The diet's important. Very yeah. important. My gosh. So many people out there try to out train a bad diet and it's just, sorry to break it guys. It's kind of impossible unless you're like Michael Phelps or something burning 4,000 calories a day, you know, gosh, it's, it's difficult. If you're, if your diet's not on point, you know, they go hand in hand, the training and the diet. So don't think that you can make up for that cheeseburger by doing extra cardio tomorrow. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah. The, uh, the, how, the amount of cardio and the amount of work you have to do to make up for a diet, like, is so, it's just not even fair. Yeah, I know. Life <laughs> is not fair. <laughs> it's just not even fair. Steve Cook did that. He did a video. I think I've talked about it before. But he had a day where he had to eat 10,000 calories and he had a hard time doing it. And then he had a day where he had to try to work off 10,000 calories. And it was, like, impossible to do. Like, yeah. it, like to burn 10,000 calories, like, in a video. And it's, like, just not, it's just so hard. Like, so much cardio versus eating, it's, like, you know, you could do it pretty quickly. Right. So I even like Googled once, like how many calories does a marathon burn? And of course everyone's going to be different. Um, but it's like for usually around like 2000 calories for 26.2 miles. Yeah. Which makes sense because I will say even tracking my calorie burn and everything at, at orange theory, usually at a, at a pretty decent pace, I'm burning like a hundred calories per mile. So think about it. Like that's, and that's just me going, I would get slower if I did you know, the longer you go, you're going to get slower. Like, so that's my pace at like, let's say two miles or whatever. But like, if I'm aiming for 26.2 miles, probably burning around 2000 calories or less. That's not fair. That is not fair. That's crazy. Like when you think about it. Yeah. So you get, you would need like, 
six miles for every hamburger, something like that, five miles for every hamburger, <laughs> yeah. like good hamburger at least. Like Yeah, and you know, this is rough <laughs> estimate because of course it does take calories to recover afterwards when you're sore and everything, of course. But it's that's pretty brutal. Fair. It I, is it's when you think about it, and it and the amount of time it took you to eat that bad treat meal or whatever, it's yeah. like ten minutes versus <laughs> like, oh my God, hours and hours of cardio for ten minutes. It's crazy. So I think in this episode, we go over how to dial in the diet, ways around having the cheating, and also like, you know, what to do if you had, you know, a really bad day type of thing too. Yeah, totally. You know? And setting up a diet because, you know, there is no one size fits all diet. You can't take my diet and expect to see the same results. And I couldn't take Adam's diet and expect to look like him because we're all different. And there's so many factors that go into the way we burn calories and Gosh, you know from experience, you have girls that eat over 3,000 calories and it's like you're trying to get them to put on a little bit of uh, body fat or whatever. And then there's some that like eat, you know, less less than half of that and, and have a hard time. So we're all built so differently in different metabolism and goals and everything else. So yeah, that is that's that's the really weird one. And that's why I do like how we do like the weekly check-in to see how people are because you can kind of progress them up based on how they're responding. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I've had, you know, what's really weird too is I've had some people. So I had like like Louise is always one I use because she's been like consistently above 4,000 and sometimes 5,000 calories a day. That is quite a grocery bill. I feel bad for Where does it go? Like She's shredded all the, it's just no cardio preps. Oh my God. And then people are like, oh, I want to do it like that. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do it like that. <laughs> like, believe me, I would do it like she that. She probably thinks like, actually, I want less because this is a lie. <laughs> no, she's on the opposite. Yeah. We've actually had to make for her a, uh, uh, we call it like a c- calorie shake and we just keep adding fats and like, l- like powdered carbs to it to get her calories in. So this powdered shake will like kind of be the variance now. It's like, you know, we bring down the fats, we bring up the fats, br- add carb. I think there's like, it's like 120 carbs in it right now. And like, I mean, there's been times where it's like 12 tablespoons of like nut butters and like, it's just crazy. It's pure Jeez. chaos. And he just drinks it throughout the day. And then that's kind of what fluctuates. Um, and then, you know, you, you, ha- you also have people. So like, for example, um, in Canada, we had, we have Brooke and she's a, she's a pro as well. And there's been times where she's been really high in calories like that with no cardio. And then now and she's, you know, dieting down, sometimes it's less than 2000. And it's like, it doesn't really make sense. Like, how are you one time? dieting down at 3000 calories and no cardio. And now you're dieting down at like, you know, 1800 calories and cardio and not getting as going as fast. So I think that's a good example to shows, you know what, there's no diets that are ever going to be the same. Like no right. prep is ever going to be the same. Um, you might have a good system and it's something figured out, but still things aren't going to always be the same. So, mm-hmm. um, and ex- you know, example for you was the last, the last peak week, it was like, no, you're full already. Like, right. We're not going to even do anything. More yeah, carbs, right? it was like that's it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the one before that, we're loading pretty hard. Yeah. So it's we're just, always in a different spot. Every scenario is different. It's crazy, right? The yeah. human body is an amazing machine. Yes, exactly. But yeah, I think one of the things that we should address too is what's sustainable for you isn't necessarily sustainable for everyone else. And I think True. that's a just a, a real hard fact people need to look at when they're setting up their diet and dialing in their diet, right? So mm-hmm. for you, you know, you've you've been doing this for, for years now, um, consistently competing in, in multiple shows a year, and you've gotten into that stage where you're like in the in the zone, you know, mm-hmm. and that in the zone phase is an awesome place to be. Yes. Um, but that's a that's a advanced level of dieting, right? You've mm-hmm. been doing it for a while, you've gotten used to it. There's a lot of people who are like, I want to do that. I want to do that. And I'm like, well, you kind of don't start there. You, it's hard to kind of just go there. So what for those people... What are you think like solutions for them that you've found to be for a more sustainable diet versus going too clean for too long and then just eating everything one weekend because you lost it, right? Right. So for me personally, um, you know, I mentioned in the last podcast, I didn't used to be like I am now. I used to be obsessed with food. I used to have bad cravings. I used to like obsess so much over food that I would look at the weekly grocery ads and get so excited like, ooh, what foods can I buy or let me plan my post-show uh, cheat meal like two months in advance. You know, I used to be like that. I, I can relate to all those who have those urges and cravings and I was always hungry. Um, but I have adapted since then and I honestly do not have bad cravings anymore. Sometimes I'll have like a little bit of a craving, but nothing that like takes over um, anything. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe like, a, hmm, I'd like to have something sweet right now, but it's not something urgent and it, it, you know, maybe I have it for a few minutes and it goes away. Sometimes I have curious taste buds though. Like, Hmm, I wonder what this flavor of rice cake would taste like. I have 
curious taste buds. <laughs> um, but I will say, I am not the strictest dieter, okay? Meaning, uh, I've mentioned this before, I don't weigh, like, my meat and stuff. I don't get obsessed over, like, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exactly weigh my broccoli out. Like, you know what I mean? So there is that, like, it kind of lifts a weight off my shoulders personally, and I'm not saying this – portion works for everyone. So don't, you don't have to follow my lead on this, but you know, I don't obsess over those little things. I, I'm pretty liberal with like condiments and, and seasonings and, and everything like that. Sugar-free drink mixes, gum. Like I don't really restrict myself with that. Of course I'll get a little stricter as I get closer to a show and be more cautious of some things, but you know, it, it I have almond milk in my coffee and I'm not like really, you know, it's like, eh, you know, whatever. But, you know, I'm in that place to where if I'm maintaining, that's kind of how I do things. Now, if I'm like desperately trying to get lean for a show and I need to really pay attention, of course, I'll be stricter. But that's like the, I guess, um, that's the benefit of maintaining between shows. I don't have to go into a show be like, oh, I got I to gotta get lean so quickly and I got to be so careful with everything because it, it can become stressful. Yeah. But I truly do believe I have retrained my taste buds. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, and, y- you know, it's like if you take away foods, like you don't crave them anymore. You know, after a certain period of time, you get in the habit of eating your clean foods and that's, parentheses because like what is clean you know but you healthy foods prep foods you get in the swing of things and it's kind of like it doesn't even become a thought to eat anything else and with that being said um for the repetitiveness of diets we live in a great time where there is so many amazing options for dieting right like 2022 you get a sugar-free barbecue sauce that to me tastes just like the real thing. Yeah. Like they didn't have that like 10 years ago. We have gum that tastes like chocolate mint cookie. We have like all these cool like crystal light flavors and different ways to season your food that aren't adding the calories. And, you know, even things like protein bars. Like think of how protein bars tasted 15 oh, yeah. years ago. And shakes. Like they they didn't used to taste as good as they are now. But now you get like those Quest cookies or, you know, some protein par- bars taste so similar to candy bars that I don't feel like I'm missing out. Like, you know, the only disadvantage is they tend to be a little more expensive than the real thing. But, you know, it's just like you learn to make these substitutions. And to me, it tastes... I'm happy as a clam eating what I'm eating. And I I always um, say this too, you know, you can turn a chicken and vegetable meal into something different every time you make it. There are so many different ways to season, to, to cook, to flavor your food, right? You can, for example, if you're doing chicken, you can grill it. You can put it in the crock pot and shred it, which is what I like to do sometimes. You can bake it. You can put it in the air fryer. Um, there's so many different ways. And then, you know, with vegetables, you can interchange them like broccoli or green beans or asparagus or cauliflower. And the seasonings, there's so many cool seasoning brands out there. And no, I never restrict sodium. I think that's stupid. I don't do that. No, no, no. Sodium, here we go. And 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 with condiments too, like this, like cool. Like, oh my gosh, I got a different flavor of hot sauce for every day of the week, you know? So you can make the same food tastes different every time so you don't get bored and that's how I don't get bored it's like I got a lot of seasonings to choose from a lot of condiments a lot of hacks like you know like my um my mustard with stevia hack becomes honey mustard for example sugar-free jello flavors are cool like you know I've got a lot of go-tos that I'm just like I'm not missing out personally so that's how I've managed to kind of accommodate my diet to me personally so yeah, that was really all really. That's a good. long one. <laughs> no, but that was good advice. That was really good yeah. advice for people because I think that that's the biggest thing is that people are, when they get in that prep mindset, all they think of is, oh, I got to eat chicken and like rice. Like boiled chicken, chicken and, and rice. Like, no, like, we can make it fun. We yeah, can make it fun. and then if and you have you have a, a little bit of an experimental excitement about it too. You're mm-hmm. like, I want to try it with this this time. Yeah. I want to try it with this this time. So it's like always there's always that mixing it up and there's a little bit of an excitement still yeah. to it too. Like I think people get excited about different foods in general so it'll be like oh i'm excited i'm gonna have a cheat meal on friday but you kind of create smaller excitements like oh i want to try this seasoning i want to yeah. try this thing we go to like that big world market store that yeah, one yeah we gotta go there sometime yeah, it's been like go. over a year yeah we gotta go um what is it called it's called um it's a world world marketplace I'm probably say. i don't know 
National market. International, International market. market. Yeah, it's off of. It's next to the Orleans Casino. Yeah, not not the not the chain one. That's like not what is World it? Market. World Market. Yeah, yeah, that one's no no no. This one is like a huge like warehouse. You could be in there all day long. Yeah, like all day long. Shelves to the ceiling of these foods that you honestly. You don't even know what it is because yeah. it's in like it's in like Japanese and stuff. Like every country you can think of has like their food and snacks, and it's kind of cool to like yeah. uh, snoop around and see what you can get. I got some stuff from there last time. I'm still using. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. Like all these little things. I'm like, oh, let's try this. Yeah, let's try this. I think we, I had some weird like beef jerky stuff. It wasn't beef though. I don't know what it was. It was like some weird jerky thing, oh, but it was yeah. it was good. So, yeah, no, that stuff is that was fun. So like little things like that, yeah. Penzi spice stores, things like that makes it a big thing, but. Um, one thing that I've found too for, and I have this for some of my clients is I'll do, if they're like really struggling with the diet, if they're eating clean, like 80% of their meal plan, and then they have that one meal per day where it's like, I'll just say, Hey, here's a, a macro meal where you just follow the macros mm -hmm. on this meal. I'm not a huge fan of macro dieting because the variance of calories becomes right. significant more, a lot so more than, than what's reported. Um, and it's unfortunate. It's just like the way that our labels are created and they're kind of deceptive and everyone's trying to reach this 100 calorie marker thing. Um, and then like I had one the other day, I was looking at these English muffins and I posted it on my stories and I was like, um, one was 40 calories less, it said, because it was a 100 calorie English muffin, but it was um, only one carb, one gram of carbs less. I'm like, so wait a minute. So one gram of carbs is 40 calories. And it's, of course, either like, yeah, it has a little bit more fiber. And everyone's like, oh, there's no calories in the fiber. I'm like, no, there are some calories in some fibers, like estimated two to three calories per gram. So like there depends on how your body's, how your body digests it, whatever, right. right? So, and what type of fiber it is. So mm -hmm. like, if they're not, sometimes it's deceptive. So I'm not a huge fan of that. And then it also doesn't take into account like the net protein, the net calorie use, which is, so it gets pretty technical and why I'm not a huge macro per tracker, um, macro coach for prep, at least off season. I'm a little bit more lenient on it because it's, it's, you know, there is a variance, but there's this other thing called the thermic effect of food, which is essentially how many calories it takes the food to digest off of the total calories. Right. So example would be, um, if you're macro tracking and you're like, I had a hundred carbs from broccoli and I also had a hundred carbs from orange juice, right? Those are two different extremes. The 100 carbs from orange juice is going to take almost no calories to digest. It's going to be like basically all the, all the calories are going to be digested for the most part, right? But the 100 carbs from the broccoli, because it's harder to digest in the body, you're not you're only going to get, let's say, so 100 carbs is 400 calories. So it's four calories per gram. Out of the orange juice, let's say you're going to actually get 380 of those calories in the system because your body uses 20 to digest it, right? Because right? it's super easy. Well, out of the broccoli, it's going to be like 75 or so calories, right? 70, maybe even 70. That's something really hard to digest. So now you have a big difference of calories. You have 270 calories versus 380. So yeah, there is a difference in the type of macros that you're eating. On the plate, and that's where the argument doesn't go past, on the plate, the calories are the same. In the system, the calories are different. How yeah. it's digested and what the net calorie effect is, is totally different. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of of that type of dieting for prep. In the off season, if there's a little bit of wiggle room, I'm cool with it. Um, and even if someone's ahead in the in season in prep, I'll give them like, okay, if you're having a real hard time with your diet, let's give you a macro meal every day where every, every, every day you kind of be your, your meal or give them, um, sugar in their post-workout, which I'm totally cool with. And on any, pretty much at any part of the phase, besides maybe the last like couple weeks where I'm like, you're going to have 30 grams of carbs post-workout and you can have that from any source of um, high glycemic index carbohydrate that you want. So it could be just pure sugar. It could be anything. Have fun with it, you know? Um, that's a, that's another way of keeping people on the diet. So mm -hmm. if you're having a real hard time sticking to it, maybe don't try to do an Ashley diet where it's just clean eating, right? Maybe try to have one meal per day. Talk to your coach. Say, hey, I want to have one meal per day. That's whatever. 400 calories. Even if it's off by a little bit, your coach can usually work around it. Like if it's if it's 10% off in the net calories, well, 40 calories, we can generally, it's not going to mess up a diet to be 40 calories off in terms of a prep, right? Do you need some sugars post-workout? Do you want to mix that up and do fruits? Or maybe you want to do some sugar-based candy or something post-workout. You know, there's ways of making it where it's not such a sacrifice where you can kind of meet in the middle. And that's what we always try to do is like meet in the middle. So I don't ever give people like chicken and broccoli diet. I stick to a menu plan, but it says like, you know, Chicken, turkey, lean beef, pork, right. like options, all these yeah. options menu. So like, I like the middle ground because that's mm -hmm. where I can track the, the you know, I could keep the thermic effect of food relatively the same. Um, you know, I could keep the calories. I can know what we're getting. We can get the data that we need without these huge variances in data. So yeah. um, that's something I, you know, I like. And, and then if someone really needs something to stick to their menu plan, 
a weekly cheat meal. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. And I usually do it based on calories for the weekly cheat meal. Right. So, um, yeah, with the cheat meal, it's, um, you know, if it seems kind of like half the people, um, when given a cheat meal, it's like, no, don't even tempt me with that because it can turn into a slippery slope, like, Ooh, the taste of the good stuff. And then they just, uh, you know, kind of destroy their, their, um, I guess, uh, perception of what food, good food tastes like. Cause then it's like, once you get a taste of the real stuff, it's like a downward spiral, right? So some people choose not to do the cheat meal or whatever. And then some people are like, no, I need this mentally, you know, just to, just to relax for a little bit, you know, just to not think about, um, the guilt or whatever, you know? So I think like there's two different types of people when it comes to that. Um, you know, but we're all different. That's a, that's a, not, not only is our, you know, our metabolism is different, but the way we think about food and what we, how, how we kind of incorporate it into our lifestyle. Cause sometimes, you know, it, part of maybe somebody's family time is dinner on Sundays, you know, going out to eat at Denny's, you never know. Yeah. So it's kind of like uh, lifestyle definitely has a, a big role to play in constructing a diet. And that is something you should be aware of and be aware of like, are you one of those people that it's like, if I have this, I'm going to want more and then I'm going to want more. Or are you one of those people that's like, no, I need it. Cause if, if I don't have a cheat meal, I'm going to like, you know, go crazy. So it's, it's, um, a very individual thing, you know? And I think for me, I, I don't need a, a treat meal really. I mean, I'm, I feel like every meal is a treat meal cause I love what I eat, you know, muscle leg. I forgot to talk about muscle egg too. Yep. That's the only way I can eat egg whites, <laughs> muscle egg, because yeah, it tastes like dessert. Is you don't like egg whites at all. I, I'm actually muscle-y. really picky. Yeah. I, I I don't really like turkey. Um, beef is okay. Steak is okay. I like chicken. I don't like egg whites unless they're like flavored like dessert, like muscle egg. So that's like an example of, <laughs> hey, we didn't have muscle egg 20 years ago. Like we're lucky now. We yeah. can have diet foods that taste great. So, I mean, personally for me, I don't feel urges of getting like a treat meal. If anything, like I have like, like I said, the curious taste buds that like maybe after show I'll be like, hmm, I wonder what this tastes like. This looks like a good So I might have a bite of something, but I don't go crazy. Do you, you know, know that us not having food a long time ago is where the whole um, you can't have dairy during a prep started. Oh, really? Like, yeah, this is kind of a cool history, here, cool hi- bodybuilding history. One of, sometimes they pop up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Um, but back in the day, bodybuilders, you know, guys like Arnold and stuff, would drink milk to gain muscle, right? They would mm-hmm. be like, you know, and that was one of the things he was like famous for saying. He's like, yeah, drink milk to get big. He's like, how do you think babies grow from like this? You know, they didn't have this. <laughs> like, how do you think babies grow this much in a few years, right? They drink milk. That's what they do. So, right. So every bodybuilder was like, you know, if Arnold said anything, it was like, you're going to, you know, the masses would do it, right? Um, so people were doing that, but they would say only during growing. And then when you're cutting, you wouldn't drink milk, right? And so what happened was back in the day, they didn't have nonfat milk. So the, the milk was super calorie dense. So you wouldn't drink milk during prep because it's so calorie dense. But then it just kept going. And now coaches say, oh, you can't drink milk during prep because with no no foundation, no reason for it, unless someone like if someone was lactose intolerant is one thing, but not, you know, a lot of people can drink milk. And so but they still stick to it because that's some old like I mean, we're talking 50 year old plus bodybuilding stuff where there where there was no skim milk. And so you would drink milk in the off season to gain muscle because it was like basically the weight gainer of the time. Right. This is calorie dense whole milk. And then during prep, you'd cut it because you know, but then it became this thing like, oh no, you can't drink milk. And now like bodybuilding coaches are like, no, you can't drink milk. And then now I'm like, why though? <laughs> like, why? what's the, what's the, like, what's the basis for, are they lactose intolerant? So that's the, that's the reason for it. So if you're, mm-hmm. if you're, someone's telling you that, um, you know, now come showtime, I'll cut that at the end just because it might, they might have some mild lactose intolerance or something, um, some sensitivity maybe, and it could make their waistline smaller. So I'll cut it definitely at the end, but if you need it, then great. But what we have now you know, we have cashew milk, we have almond milk, we have all these cool milks that don't feel like sacrificing at all. There's also this milk, and you can't get it in every city. They have it in, I would say, like most West Coast cities. Have you seen that? Like Carb Master chocolate milk? Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That I know stuff, you love that. I love I it. remember. I almost, I, I love it so much. I almost like don't want to mention it because then people will find out about it and it won't be available. <laughs> like I almost selfishly don't want to tell people about that. <laughs> Because I'm like, it's so good that it like, it's, it's not going to be available. It's so it's called carb master 
what is it called? Carb Master? Just called Carb Master. It's in the milk section. It's like chocolate, vanilla, and whatever. But it's uh, it tastes just like chocolate milk. Like that wasn't available back then. Mm -hmm. So I throw that in my coffee. That's just good. But anyway, I like flax milk. Flax milk's delicious. What's up with you and flax? You really like that stuff. I gotta get my omegas somewhere because I don't (laughs) eat seafood. That's true. See, I'm so picky. You guys have no idea how picky I actually am. We should talk about that. I am so picky. You don't. Yeah. So everyone, that's a good thing you bring up because. You know, some people know it, but Ashley doesn't eat fish. So the, no tol- seafood. the uh-uh. whole tilapia and asparagus thing yeah. that you need it to get to be good at competing. It's gross, man. Yeah. It, there, and there used to be that that uh, bodybuilder um, myth that, oh, eating fish is going to thin your skin. Yeah, that whole thing. I still hear that sometimes. That is so false, guys. That is so false. So if somebody's telling you that, you got yeah. a question. It's kind of cringy. It's, it's, kinda, it's like. It's kind of cringy because like you can look at. So how I look at bodybuilding too, I always look at it like, okay, what's on, what are they saying? And then I look at it as, okay, how has it worked in the world in history, right? And I always look at it like, okay, how does that relate to our earlier days, right? So when I heard that bodybuilding thin skin one, I was like, well, that's kind of weird because like in Japan, that's like most of their diet. In some of these islands, it's all of their diet, right? There was no animals on some of these islands for you know generations and generations all they ate was fish was their skin like falling off of them like was it so thin you I could actually see would it? say like the, the <laughs> Japanese and Koreans they're big into seafood and they have very nice su- supple thick skin in a good way yeah like really good skin like, yeah oh remember okay. we're in Korea it was like the best skinned people the best skin so people. pretty the people were they so are pretty gorgeous in Korea, South Korea yeah, yeah you they told are, me that oh, going into it you're I'm like, just like oh I'm jealous like I, oh, milky white, supple, like flawless, <laughs> no freckles. I mean, not the freckles are ugly. I'm not saying that at all, but just like, like filter. Because, it looks like a filter. Yeah. Just Glowy, flawless skin. dewy skin. Yeah. I remember that you, when we went there, you were like, just, just from every girl that was going to have like, like try to find a pimple in the whole country. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, it was so crazy. Yeah. So yeah, and it was just a, beautiful almost a, a, a thicker type of a skin, too, like where it was not that thin, thin skin that you would expect from people who, like, primarily eat fish, right? So you got to look at your, like, his, history, too, of, like, what is the – and if anyone says that, they, oh, no, the skin – the fish thins out your skin, like, give them that argument. Okay, what about these islands and these countries where their primary diet is is that? Because they still use that things for, like, heart problems because – you look at like Japan has a low risk of, of heart problems, right? Because they're the, the foods they eat are really low in fats and low in cholesterol naturally, right? From from the fishes and stuff. So um, you could look at like problems that do happen, and one of them is not skin. Right? It's not like oh the the poor whatever island their skin just hangs off of them because it's so thin. They have no UV protection and their oh muscles are just getting gosh. zapped by the sun. <laughs> you can see their skeletal system because oh <laughs> yeah. their skin's so thin. So yeah, that doesn't that's not a thing, guys. Uh, um, so, okay. Dialing in your diet hack. Um, so one of the things that, that have been really like helpful is for these people finding hacks. Um, just an example, the other day, like Sam made me a birthday cake, right? With, uh, and the whole cake had 900 calories and it was mainly pr- protein based, um, low fat. She's actually going to be making like a cookbook type thing coming out pretty soon, but there's just so many options in there too. And if you're having a real hard time with it, and you want to exchange some like macros, like talk to your coach, maybe once a day you do that, you know, have a one, one day where it's a macro meal. I have a, a, a client named Jesse and she does this with her family. Um, every night she does a 500 calorie meal and the rest of the meals are structured. And that 500 calorie meal has to have a, a minimum of 20 grams of protein. If it's on top of my head, it might be like, it might be 28 um, grams of protein. And then the rest of it can be whatever she wants. Right. So there's ways of making it work for a lifestyle type of scenario. And right. you can really, it, for me personally, if I have a goal, I'll just stick to a, uh, I'd rather, I'd rather be told what to do. I'd rather be like only eat the same things. And I just, for me, it's just easier to just eat the same things. My diet's real, like yours is bad, but when I'm dieting, it's like really bad. I'll just get like a, like the four ounce, like turkeys and like, just cook like six of them. Like, that's what I'm eating today. <laughs> like, I don't even care what else is in it. And I, but that's when I'm in the zone. Right. But, um, and that's easier for me cause I can track it. It's accurate. It's just easy. Right. But um, for, for someone else who might be on the other extreme of that, for them to stick to a diet, they might need that week, that daily meal that they can look forward to. But I don't think that it's that big of a sacrifice to eat clean the rest of the meals and have 
one meal a day where it's a little bit looser, you know, and and then you could still have that accurate data tracking too. Mm -hmm. And that can make all the difference too. I think a lot, uh, one of the biggest mistakes when people start to diet is they go too hardcore, too fast. So like, let's say some person is, is used to eating a certain way and they have their routine. Okay. And then they want to start prep. Um, I personally like to at least make some meals kind of similar to what they've been doing. So it's not such a drastic change. Cause if you go from eating whatever the heck you want to chicken, broccoli, chicken, broccoli, chicken, broccoli, chicken, broccoli, it's likely you're not going to be able to sustain that for too long. Right. You kind of got to ease into it in a sense. I mean that especially like with the taste buds, right. You're going to have some cravings first and foremost. You're, you got to ease into it. And I think having like a little bit of a flexible meal, like you mentioned, can be such a lifesaver for some people. Cause it's like, well, I still get a little bit of a choice in my diet and it's not, not, uh, not a big deal to, um, accommodate these macros into one of the meals rather than going, like so strict and so uh, completely different from what you've been doing and then just falling off after two weeks, right? I think that's actually something that's important to talk about. You you struck on there. We talk about easing out of a diet all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about like the post-show diet and we've gone over that and how we do the post-show diets and we can go over that again one day. Um, But we don't talk about easing into a diet ever. Right. Like we don't ever talk about that, right? It's always like, it's like off season, turn the switch, in season, boom, right Mm -hmm. in your face. And then we're like, well, why are people struggling? Like, you know what I mean? So like, it's a good, it's a good thing to talk about of easing into the diet. And I I do like that, especially Mm -hmm. as it progresses into it. And that's how we say to do it. We say, you know, you could have a little looseness as long as you're ahead, as long as you're on pace. So Mm -hmm. what I, what I mean by that is if you're 12 weeks out and you look 12 weeks out, great, we can keep it there. But if you're 12 weeks out and you look 18 weeks out, yeah, sorry, Charlie, it's going to get a little rough and you can either decide to do the show in 12 weeks and sacrifice a little, or you could do a show in 18 weeks, which is what you look like you're out. You know, you can, so you have to be realistic with that too. But yeah, we don't talk about, you know, the easing into the diet too. And I I don't really go crazy clean until the last like month, three weeks before a diet. And I think, you know, Hey, it is what we're doing, what we're doing here. Like you're competing with your body. Like it's, it's, you know, you're, you're not supposed to look like a Greek God. Like, it's just not how we're designed to be really high amount of muscle and real low amount of body fat. Like you got to understand it's going to take some sacrifice to do that. And I think that that's another thing that, you know, we need to be real about too. Don't expect to be eating cheat meals all the way into it and, and expect to have all this looseness in your diet. And then also say, I want to be the best in the world when the best in the world girls aren't even doing that. And they're, and then, so, and I had to have this talk with someone the other day. I was like, look, the best in the world girls are doing this and they're doing it for long periods of time. Even the ones that are doing like macro diet are only eating clean foods for those macros. They're just fitting their macros in with clean foods, which is, you know, fine. This is pretty much the same thing. Um, but you think that you're good enough genetically to hang with those girls with that extreme disadvantage. And like, you think that genetically you're just going to be able to pass them with that. Like, that's not a realistic thing. You know, I'm just, I can't hit more home runs than Barry Bonds without practicing or training harder than Barry Bonds. Like, Oh no, I'm just genetically, I could probably do it. You know, that's just, let's face some reality here too. So your, your dedication and your sacrifice should be equal to the, the long-term goal. Right. So if your goal is just, Hey, I just want to do a show. I just want to have fun maybe do better than the last time. Yes. Hey, I want to be Miss Olympia by, by 2024. Okay. Well, let's talk about what that's going to take. That's going to be something different. That is a different beast, you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. That's true. So, you know, it's, um, I know that there are some on the opposite end of things, overly ambitious people that just want to like drop it down. So when they first begin crap, prep and just drop it down to a certain uh, calorie range or whatever and eating like the, the plainest foods possible and you know you got to admire their you know very ambitious but then those are the people that you don't see like sticking to it for too long because it has to be sustainable right yeah. so it's just like you know you, you got to find out what what technique works best for you? So not only what foods work the best, but like how do you how do you process food mentally? Like, is it a big deal to you? Do you uh, is it a big part of your life? Is it what makes you happy, or do you just you know eat to live? I guess yeah. in a sense. So you know there are, there are different types of people out there. Some people don't think about food as much as others, and some it's like a big part of their family get-togethers and all that. So yeah, I've had some I've had some people that had success with it too, and. Um I had a client named Nicole a long time ago and I worked with her for years. She ended up going pro and figure. And she, um, she, I was always, it was, we always had this battle cause we we're like good friends too. We always had this battle. I'm like, you got to watch your off seasons. You got to watch your off seasons. You gotta watch your, she's like, you know what, Adam? She's like, I just like 
to eat whatever I want in the off season. And I don't care if I just kill myself for like 16 weeks. I don't have, I have no problem killing myself for 16 weeks. And if you think I need to kill myself for 18 weeks to get ready for the show and I can still have these bad off seasons and do what I want to do in the off season, then that's fine with me. I don't care when I hit, when I turn, when I get in the zone. And then, so we argued about it for a few years, right? About it. Like, and I was like, you could have just been like, you know, you could just be a little bit better if you just did this. And then, um, she ended up like, you know, obviously excelling in it. And then one day I was like, you know what? It, it does work for you. You know, it does work for you. It's not ideal. She's like, I know it's not ideal, but it's just how I like to do it. And I don't mind you like killing me for 16 weeks, 20 weeks. I, I live in the prep. Like I'll live in there. I don't mind living in that, like mm -hmm. that struggle. And so, um, for her, it made sense. You know, it was, it was, she, for her, she found balance that way. Like she didn't care when she was in the zone. So, um, so that, you know, there is an argument for it. I'm not, I definitely wasn't a huge fan of it, but, um, she definitely opened my mind to it. And that's the cool thing about like being a prep coach is you, you work with so many people that you do find all these options for everyone, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely. And, and that one, there's no argument that it works. She got a pro card, right. And figure mm -hmm. that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. So like, yeah, Hey, you know, not ideal for the normal scenario, but maybe for her, it's great. And, um, you know, now I got a question that came in here and, mm -hmm. and someone said, what do you do when you mess up on a diet? And there's a lot of, there's a lot of things on this. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to handle this one and they're pretty much all right. So we've been a big part of, Hey, just move on. Like just, yeah. just move on with the day. Right. Put it behind you. Put yeah. it behind you. And get just a good going. lift the next day. Get yeah. a good lift. I, I wouldn't try to out cardio you it though. Yeah. Good luck with that. And I think, too, is, like, when people try to out you their cheat meal, it becomes a yo-yo cycle. Yeah. And then they think, oh, I'll just do it again. And then, then they're combating it with cardio and just messing it all up. I would just say, don't let it happen again. Don't make a habit of it. I'm not saying it's a great thing, but just move on. It's a new day tomorrow. Get in a freaking good lift tomorrow. Don't try to out you it, though. Get in a good lift. Yeah. Leg day. That's usually what Leg I'm, day. that's usually what I'll go like 90% of the time. I'm just like, you know what? Use that energy. You're full of glycogen. Like use that for a really good leg day. Do extra stuff. Go past what the workout says on your plan. Do extra sets. Work out with a friend. Like do drop sets, all this stuff. And really just use that energy the right way. Um, and then there's, there's also the argument, which I've used here and there, is to have, you know, a, a diet day. The only problem is, is I don't like creating a habit of it. Right? Yeah. Just like it, you said. Yeah. If, if you had a, re let's say you're on vacation, you had a really bad week. Well, the argument there is, you know, you do have extra energy stored up. You have extra glycogen stored up. The argument really is, okay, if I do a hard diet week, Adam, how much damage am I doing to myself? That's how much harder am I making it after this week? The short-term goal, let's just ignore that for a second. How much damage am I doing to myself later on, right? And so there have been some, there's ongoing study about it actually of like how much you're adapting metabolically, um, with going really hard for a week. And the, so far there's, it, it looks like not really much at all. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, the argument is there. If you go bad for a week, let's say a vacation week and you're going on vacation once a year, twice a year, whatever. Right. And then the next week you diet hard and get in the gym. There's a, there's a, an argument that that is the right thing. That is the right way of doing it. That's one of the things you could mm -hmm. do. And I do do that here and there. Someone has a bad day. They're at a wedding or something the weekend before or whatever. And then that Monday, they just go like carb free, do extra cardio. Yeah, I do that. Too. Have people do that too. You know, there's nothing wrong with yeah. it. Yeah, we, we do it here. We, we call it like a hell week where someone goes hard, like for like <laughs> a week, right? When we're just trying to do it for the minimal amount of time where your body's not going to adapt or adapt minimally. So it's just the problem is, is that the longer you do it, the more likely the body's going to adapt. So if you're, if you're throwing these days in, you know, once, you know, every few days or something, like it's, you're essentially lowering your total calorie input over like the average time frame. And then, yeah, you're going to have a more significant adaption. So, um, so yeah, there's the arguments for that. I wouldn't get in the habit of, like Ashley said, though. That's the thing. Oh, so, yeah. But I it's, don't disagree with it either. It's a it's a delicate balance because you don't want you don't want somebody to feel worse than they already do about it. They're already feeling guilty. Or even if it's you yourself, you're probably already feeling guilty. You know, you don't want people to feel like they've ruined everything. You know, we we can't let that that cheat day turn into a cheat week that turns into a cheat month. So sometimes when people think I've messed up so bad that it's over, my prep is done, get that out of your head. It's not. You just got to put it behind you, move forward. Don't make a habit of it. Not saying it's a good thing. Just don't make a habit of it. And, you know, there, are, like, like you mentioned, there are a few things you can do to kind of mm, – navigate around it a little bit by getting some good lifts after. And, and sometimes I'll even have people do like 
a few days of a keto diet after or whatever, or even just a, like a low carb or just to kind of stick to the basics, meat, protein, meat, protein kind of thing. Um, but I definitely wouldn't suggest like restricting calories so so much the the following days because then it becomes like the yo-yo kind of like when you throw a bunch of cardio at somebody after they've messed up it becomes like a yo-yo thing and I don't think that's like the healthiest thing to do mentally um and yeah it just uh, to me I I would think it would create a bad habit so it's kind of like you know you you gotta be careful how you handle it afterwards especially like when it comes to like girls and they feel bad and you you know don't want anybody to feel worse than they do um but uh don't make a habit of it move forward today's new day hey just get a good lift. Put those calories to good use, yeah. at least. I have another good question that came up here from Surf Snow Repeat. Um, it's she says, "What do you? Uh, what if you have your planned cheat meal after workout, but the next day is a scheduled rest day? Does it make a di- big difference versus scheduling your leg day after a cheat meal?" So, um, so I, I think that a lot of times we approach cheat meals the wrong way. I, I think that that's definitely something that we're approaching the wrong way in terms of the timing of it. Um, how I would generally think that the cheat meal is used best, and this is going to, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, that kind of sucks. And I'm sorry, but it's just the reality of things. The way that I think the cheat meals is done best is before workout, like right before workout, you know, a few hours before the workout. So that food's like already digesting, it's in the system and you can use it right away for a kick-ass workout, right? So that's how I would say the best way of doing it is. Um, if you're, I definitely wouldn't, like, everyone's like, oh, I do it for post-workout because it's great for recovery. Well, it's not really like you need it that much for recovery. It's not going to be superior than you getting just carbs in and whey protein in. It's not like it's a superior, it's just more calories in general with the same thing, right? But you have excess energy that's not being used instantly. So your, your likelihood to store it more is, is a little bit higher, right? Versus using it and having that energy in the workout. Maybe you're going to get a better workout. Maybe you're going to get extra sets in. Maybe you're going to burn more of those calories in. You're going to feel great in the gym. You're going to get extra lifts. You're going to get, you know, you're going to hit a PR that day, whatever. So that's how I generally say the best way of doing it. Um, I wouldn't, if if the, probably if, I mean, we're talking about minute differences, but what I wouldn't do is do your cheat meal and then a rest day after. I would definitely try to get in a workout as close to that as possible. So um, for some people, I say, hey, eat a big breakfast and have fun with your cheat meal and then go to the gym, you know, a few hours later. That's the best way I've found cheat meals work. I think I get the most bang for your buck and definitely a workout the next day too. So if you can time it that way, great. Mm -hmm. Now, I think there's another thing that I want to go into of um, like what happens when you go off your diet, like how, how much do you actually pay for it? like on the diet, you know? So for you, if you ever, I mean, you don't have a ton of experience obviously going bad on the diet, but like, how do you feel kind of thing? That's one thing that we don't ever talk about. Yeah. I mean, especially that happens so much after a show. It's like, you know, you feel like you've been deprived all prep. And then uh, a lot of people see like their post-show cheat meal as like an opportunity to eat whatever they can fit in their mouth and as much as possible, like it's their free time to eat. And then, Nine times out of ten, they regret it <laughs> the next day when they're super bloated and swollen with water. Their abs have disappeared. The food isn't digesting like it usually does. And your body's just being rebellious. And then that's when you start to have the regrets like, dang, it, I, you know, I had my cheat meal last night, but I, I woke up and it feels like it didn't really even die. It's still in there. It's it, My stomach is still distended. And to me, that is such an uncomfortable feeling. I actually hate the feeling of being like completely full. Like, I don't like it. Um, so, you know, I think hindsight is twenty twenty. but keep in mind that <laughs> you'll be paying for it the next day, especially if it's foods that you haven't really had in a while. Like, you know, because your body's just like, what do I do with this? And your diet, especially with the digestion system, I don't think people really talk about that much. Sometimes it can take a few weeks to recover yeah. from that one huge Gmail you had just to get back on track and get that digestion like going again because it's having a hard time like breaking things down and you know it's it's crazy it's really it's like wow yeah the taste is very short-lived yeah because you when you get to that stage you like inhale the food you don't like it's not like you're enjoying every bite of it it's like you're you inhale the food the the taste is short-lived the after effects are long-lived and the after feeling is like a day sometimes where you're just not feeling great after you know so me personally, I've gotten to the point where I just don't see the justification of it because of how I, that's like the biggest deterrent is, well, if I eat that, yeah, that pizza is going to taste great. And I'll, but now like I'll do like, if I do a weekly cheat meal, it's like a clean pizza, but I'm super happy with it. I'll do like a cauliflower pizza, Mm -hmm. not as much cheese. And I'll do like extra chicken. And like, I don't feel bad 
sometimes I'll feel a little bit like because of the marinara, so I'll feel like a little bit because it's like it's a decent amount. But I don't feel bad about it. Like if I ate a big pizza, like a big pizza for one of these places, like when right. we go to the Chicago Pro or something. And, and um, you know, so for me, that's the deterrent enough. It's not the taste itself. It's like, uh, I don't want to feel bad for eight hours. You oh, know, especially this. if you fly home the next day and Gosh. then you come home and your ankles are all swollen and you can tell where <laughs> your socks were. Like, ooh, yeah, so, I hate that feeling. So think about that. And then the other deterrent, and this is something that we need to talk about for everyone out there, like what is the real negative effect of a bad week or a bad cheat meal? Um, or let's say a bad, like a bad week, right? Okay, so let's give you an example. You're in prep, you have a bad week, and you gain two pounds, right? And you're like, oh, no big deal. I just lost a week of prep, right? And you have 16 weeks to prep for a show. Let's say you have eight weeks left, right? So you did it. You bad week, you're eight weeks out. Everyone's done this. They have a bad week. They gain two pounds, right? Okay, so you lost week eight to seven of prep. That week's gone. But you don't get, you don't start back up on seven to six, week seven to six, in terms of your progress. Now you are set back to where you were starting at week nine, right? So now you're, you lost a week of progress from weeks eight to seven, and you're back to weeks nine to eight in terms of your overall body fat, right? So now you're, you put yourself two weeks behind going into weeks seven to six, right? Now you have to make up for that week that you gained weight. So you lose seven to six and getting back to where you were from weeks eight to seven. So now when you finally get to five to four, you're actually at the same starting point you were at seven to six, and now you're more adapted than you were at weeks nine to eight. Right. So it sets you back a lot farther than you think. It's it's and people are like, oh, I just lost a week. I don't know why I got behind in prep. I'm like, dude, you lost three weeks in one three days. Like, yeah. what do you what and you want to be the best? Like, what are we doing here? Like what like what other sport in the world would that be okay? Like, would that be okay? Like, hey, I just didn't train for three weeks, which is essentially kind of similar, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm training for an MMA fight. I got 16 weeks. I'm just gonna skip three weeks and de- regress within this. And then I'm like getting into the fight and I'm like not cardio, I'm not cardio ready. And I gas out in the third round and get beat. And I'm like, I don't know. I trained, right? Like, no, dude, it's not, it's not like that. You had one bad week. It's like you missed three weeks. Like, I don't care if your other weeks were good. Like you missed those weeks. And so, and that's just a real talk that people need to hear because this board is not for, it's not designed to be this like health and fitness, like fun, go to the gym, just enjoyment of like aerobic exercise type of activity. It's not, it's not like that. It does require a, a, a continuous adherence to discipline, right? So I want to find a way for people to get away from that bad week. I want to find a way where we can have some foods and some tricks like you're doing where they don't need to have that two pound weight gain because they go off track so much. So what do we need to do to do that? And you need to find out that out for yourself. Okay. What's realistic for me? Can I do the Ashley K diet where I eat chicken and I, I don't complain at all. I don't care. Or is that just not realistic for me? Is that like, just, I'm not there yet. Right. And I couldn't, I couldn't jump into your diet right now. I don't think I could jump into it right now. It would take me like probably a month, like, and that's pretty fast, but it could take me like a month to get back there if I was like super dedicated. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you just got to be real with yourself on that. Cause if you're doing that diet, are you going to have a crazy rebound or have that bad week? That's going to set you back three weeks now that you know the real effects of it. Right. So um, yeah, so that's just something that I think we all got to, we all got to figure out what's best for, for you and find out, you know, you talk to whoever you're working with or yourself and, and create those adjustments mm-hmm. for adherence. Okay. The best diet, there's never going to be an argument for this. I'm going to tell you the best diet in the world. The best diet in the world is one you can stick to. Yes, absolutely. agree. hundred percent. I don't mm-hmm. care if it's macros, if it's clean eating, even if it takes longer to get to where you need yeah. to be, but you can stick with it for a longer period of time. There is no one in their right mind that's going to argue that. Best yeah. diet is one you can stick to. Yep. And the best results are ones you can sustain. So yep. the best results aren't you crash dieting for a show, doing two hours of cardio, eating 800 calories, looking good for a week, and then literally being so deprived that you just eat everything you see and lose that in you know two weeks' time. And then you're worse than when you started, right? In like six weeks, which happens literally all the time. And these are the girls that are like, Oh, prep ruined my, ruined my life, ruined my diet. I can never get, I can never get my metabolism right. And it's not your metabolism. It's just your adherence to diet. Let's just face mm-hmm. the reality of that. So it's, it's, you got to find what works for you and you got to find also a way to get there where you can sustain. Okay. If, you, if you're getting, if you're getting results in an unsustainable way, then you're getting unsustainable results. Yeah. Okay. Which means if you're getting to contest shape with two hours of cardio, 600, 800 calories, and you can't maintain that for the rest of your life, guess what? You can't maintain those results for the rest of your life. 
you have to find a way to get there in a real more realistic manner. So, um, yeah, now if you're doing, let's say, 30 minutes of cardio and you're eating 1,500 calories going into a show, right, and you're going to get, you know, gain 6 to 8% body fat after the show, that's just, which is, I'm, I'm sorry, 6 to 8 pounds, 6 to 8% weight, not body fat, 6 to 8% <laughs> weight after a show, then, you know, that's realistic. You could bring down your cardio to 20 minutes. You can bring your calories up to 1,800. That's realistic. You can, you know, maintain that. You can live off of that, right? You can maintain those results. But when we're talking 800 calories, 600 calories, two hours of cardio, like what what the, re the reduction is so great that it's the results are not going to be sustained. And the increase of calories is so great that it's like triple what you're, you, you were prepping with, right? So of course you're not going to maintain those results. So anyway, those are some, I went off in a different direction there, did I? No, no. no. Okay. Oh, the I'm doing pretty good at staying on path today. I got to admit. I know. I know, right? This is like one of the first. I know. <laughs> it's incredible. Wow. <laughs> Incredible. So I can take some medication. I think I was medicated today so I can stay on path. <laughs> I don't know. You opened the ships that sit down this. So I don't know. I did. Going. I actually was like, what do you what world do you live in where What's you open wrong up your with you? I have some quest chips in here. <laughs> Which is nice. I have my nice little lunch pack I got yeah. to work. Ashley was so proud of me. I had this little like lunch sack to work. Heck yeah. In a in a plastic bag. We're recycling, re you know, we're using <laughs> I like it a lot. Yes. I like it a lot. <laughs> this is funny. I like, what are you doing with your low voice? It's funny. Mm -hmm. it's throwing me off. Okay. What else are we missing here, Ash? So, um, you know, I think we touched a little bit on that post-show meal just a little bit, but I would also like to add to that. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people do is they will bring the treats with them to their hotel room for after the show or to share with their friends and they bring it in large amounts. As if they'll not have access to that same food. What's up with that? <laughs> like you see, like they'll bring the whole like dozen of cookies. They'll bring a whole cake. Not the macro friendly cake either. You know, they'll they'll just bring all the donuts, all the, the bags of chocolate. And they, they hoard it into their hotel room or bring it with them backstage. And I'm just like, oof. Whew. That's mm. or you see that's those going like, that's going to be bad. Or you see the friends that bring like the. The, the bouquet of chocolates and the bouquet. Have you seen those? Like the like the, it's like a chocolate arrangement or candy bouquet like mm. they give to their friend after whatever. Which is a nice, nice gesture. Nice gesture, yeah. But maybe um, a small one, I guess, to share. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's like a horrible thing because, you know, you, those are going to get eaten. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's also important to, to really hydrate after show too since maybe on show day you're not drinking your usual gallon because nobody wants to drink a gallon before going on stage, right? You're going to look like you are bloated. <laughs> so um, usually we're not drinking as much, so that can also lead to extra hunger and there's extra space in there to make room for naughty treats. And uh, <laughs> it's important to start chugging that water after you get off stage. Have some Diet Coke. I love Diet Coke after after show. Diet Coke protein bars, like my thing. I love that. Um, but, you know, that can also be a factor within, uh, you know, going off the rails. So just, you know, even, even with your, your treat meal that you have, that's not after show, just, I think planning is a big thing. Be prepared in advance, have a plan, you know? So don't just uh, go with, um, whatever you can find at that moment. Cause yeah. oftentimes your taste buds are going to do the thinking for you. And that's never a good thing. And I always tell people too, like, don't make it a mission to finish the volume that's yeah, provided take it to you. Home if you want or give yeah. it to somebody or freeze, I freeze foods too. Like the cookies thing, you know, I hate the cookies thing. Like, I don't think there's anything more in the world that I hate than this cookies thing that's infiltrated the fitness industry, the competition fitness industry specifically. I think it's the absolute worst thing that is not, the, not the healthy cookies, not the healthy not, cookies, not the quest cookies. These like 1500 calorie cookies that are like endorsing athletes and saying, I'm like, they're giving them like coupon codes. And like, we're talking to like a lot of them are bikini competitors and they're giving them like these, they're, they're all promoting it. And I'm like, well, you got to understand, like most people can't just eat a bite of that cookie. Like most people are going to eat the whole thing once they start that, getting that taste in their mouth and a bikini competitor getting ready for a show, you know, she might be a hundred pound bikini competitor eating, you know, a thousand calories going into that show. That cookie alone is like 1500 calories, 1200 calories. Right. So those are the things that really like drive me crazy. Like just don't make it a mission to finish the amount. Like you'd be happy if you, if you're happy after you eat two bites of it, then just be done with it and just have those two bites. Like that's, that's a thing. People do that. Like people don't, you don't need to eat just because if the cookie's this big, you don't need to eat the whole thing because of what happens is that the cookie, if the cookie was twice as big as that, you'd eat the whole thing too. Like there's a point where you're just like, okay, I got the taste out and I'm good. And like accepting that. Right. 
So anyway, that was my cookie thing. I, I hate the cookie thing so much. So <laughs> they could pay me any amount of money. I would never endorse it ever, no matter Unless what. Unless it's a healthier version. If it was a healthy version, yeah. And there was a company that approached me and they said they're going to make like a healthier version type of thing of it. And if it was like, hey, if you got like a one-to-one ratio of carbs or protein and a little bit of fats, like I'm cool with that. But these other ones, I'm like, dude, that's it is no place being at like fitness shows when people are in the most susceptible place to gain back body fat the most rapidly. Like you're... It is the worst thing you should be having, right? I don't I don't know if there's anything even worse, to be honest. I think that like eating butter, like <laughs> like that would be worse, like barely worse than that. It's so it's just it has no place in our industry. So anyway, that's my whole that's I'm getting off my soapbox on that one. It makes me so mad. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Cause I'm like, dude, I'm killing myself in my office till like eight o'clock trying to get fat off of these guys, and you're killing yourself in your office trying to get it back on them. Like, what are you doing here? So anyway. Um. You know, if you if you're in that situation too, like you mentioned, <laughs> you can have a few bites. Or whatever. You know what I like to do if, if if I'm ever feeling like I'm tempted or something, I'll be like, I would have a few pieces, and I'll give it to like my friend to take home, and then I'll you know have it at a later time or something, or yeah. just be like, you go finish this for me. I, I just you know I don't even want to see it, or just freeze it, or you know I'll give it to Adam, and be like, hey, can you put this in your hotel room? I just don't want it right now. Yeah, you yeah. know. So if that's something you can do, like if you really feel like it's going to be an issue. Um, but yeah, it's um slippery slope. It definitely can trigger those taste buds to want more. Yeah. So um, a couple of quick questions, I guess, and then we'll sign off here because we're getting, getting to that time frame. Um, so one of them comes from the Deb D. Campbell. She says, I'm struggling to get in water. I usually hit 80 ounces a day. What do you do to help to drink more water? I go through this too. Ashley's actually on me about it sometimes drinking. I don't drink enough water. Yeah, but... Um, I drink like two gallons of water a day. Yeah. Because of crystal light. Exactly. Yeah, so... Those the, flavorings. The goal should be to have, so the wa- water is relative to how your size, okay? So, and that should be for everything going up. So I tell everyone to have one ounce per pound of weight. So if you're a 250 pound bodybuilder and, and I say, hey, Ashley, have a gallon of water a day, but you're a 250 pound bodybuilder and you're only having one gallon of water a day, well, you're twice as big as Ashley. Why should you only have one gallon of water a day? So that, that goes incrementally all the way up, right? More, the bigger you are, the more water you should have. So one ounce per pound, um, I would say don't worry about the whole one gallon thing unless you weigh exactly 120 pounds, which is 120 ounces, right, mm-hmm. for a gallon. So yeah, um, that's one thing. Now, the way that I, I hate, this is funny, water has no taste, but I just don't like it. I don't like water by itself. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing, right? It's like I only need it to survive. Why don't I not? Like yeah. why? It's like saying I don't like air. Well, I don't like it, okay? So... <laughs> I need Mio water flavoring for it. I use Mio. Mio. They have so many cool flavors now for your drinks. Like they have the Skittles sugar-free drink mix, the Starburst. I love the pink Starburst sugar-free drink mixes. They're amazing. But they have so many cool. Bolero is a is a oh, brand yeah. that, yeah, you have them. I love oh, that. Oh, that's them. Yeah, oh, okay, Bolero. cool. That's they're, what they're, they, You can find them at Expos sometimes, but I think they're based in Europe. They have great flavors. You can get them on Amazon too. But all these cool drink flavorings, and then, uh, you know, during peak, we we do like to kind of limit that just in case it causes any um, digestion issues. And that's, it's not a proven thing or anything like that. It will, eliminating artificial sweeteners, the peak week of, affect you in any way. Maybe, maybe not. But just in case we like to eliminate. So what I like to do is I, at that point during peak week, I'll do like LaCroix or like um, sparkling flavored water. And I'll add a few uh, little things, as uh, drops of stevia in there, you know, just a little some, some. Um, so, you know, there's so many options that when it comes to uh, fluids. I, I do not have a problem getting my fluids in thanks to these tasty drink mixes. Okay. Word. I think uh, I'm just trying to see. If, I'm going to go over and see if we have any other good questions. <laughs> a lot of people agree with me on this cookie thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sammy says, I always tell people eat to grow. Um, I'm, the, you know, and in, in terms of that, there, there is a, so there is a, there's an argument for that. I always tell people to lift to grow, not eat to grow. Cause you're, you're, even when you're in a slight caloric deficit, your body's still going to find a way to recover and, and use those calories to recover muscle, you can grow in a caloric deficit. So don't get stuck behind the eat to grow, I need a caloric surplus type of thing. You're going to build, yes, you'll build less muscle if you're in a caloric surplus. And if you're in a, are in a caloric deficit, then you're in a caloric surplus, but not significantly unless you're in a really big caloric deficit. So um, if you're eating close to maintenance, maybe a slight deficit, you're working out really hard and you're creating the stimulus, your body's going to take those calories still and, and recover and build that muscle. That's that's going to be the primary concern. 
for the body unless it has such low body fat and such low energy reserves that there's just no energy available for it and it's going to kind of and naturally shut you down anyway. You're not going to be lifting as much weight. You're not going to have as much energy in the gym. You're not going to really be able to lift to grow when you're in this big caloric deficit and you're, because your body's going to have the energy to do it. So it's kind of like a self-survival thing that your body does for you. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah, lift. I feel like that can be an excuse to, to eat and bulk. bulk. Yeah. What is that? Bulking. Bulking's like an old school thing. I mean, yeah, if you like... Don't. Especially bikini competitors, you don't need to bulk. No, <laughs> I mean, definitely yeah. not. Especially bikini competitors, and that's yeah. another thing we could go into one day. But like, we talk about bikini competitors. You like, if Ashley had probably, I would say probably in the six pounds to eight pounds more muscle on her, she would probably pass the bikini category. Like people don't understand what muscle actually looks like on someone. Like, she, you know, so if let's say, okay, let's give a best case. Let's say uh, she gained six pounds of muscle, right? Eight pounds of muscle. And she's now she's too big for a bikini. Okay, and she needed to gain, like how much do you actually need to gain is something that you need to ask yourself, right? Ashley needs to put on a tiny bit of size and shoulders and arms. It's probably like two pounds, mm -hmm. like maybe three, like total lean mass, right? So why would she gain 20 pounds to do that? Right, and yeah, I mean, I went through the whole, like basically last year and I still made improvements and even this year, but I think like what people don't realize too is like for me is like, I think what kind of holds me back sometimes from putting on that size that I need to is the actual travel schedule itself yeah. and me not being able to train as usual, if that makes sense. So like, for example, peak weeks, even depending on where I'm going, you got to factor in the travel days, I'm going to be jet lagged when I come back and that can affect my training big time. So for me, it's not necessarily a fact of like eating a whole lot more. It's more of like getting into a good lifting schedule where I'm going hundred percent intensity yeah. all the time because you know, when I do show to show to show to show, I'm working out half the time at half the intensity yeah. because I'm dealing with things like jet lag and just traveling itself. Like when I travel the East coast, I'm literally losing in a whole day. And when I go into a show, it's not like I can train extremely intensely the day before a show, even the, the day of show, I can't work out. Obviously day after a show, I'm usually pretty dang drained. Um, jet lag after I get even Monday, when I come back, I'm still like, Oh my God, yeah, I'm just not feeling <laughs> normal right now. So, you know, I, I think there's ways to, to put on muscle too, but like, you don't have to eat a whole bunch of calories and put on the weight you can yeah. still make improvements yeah i think like it's just you got to be consistent you got to put intensity into it yeah that's people people don't realize that part of it that that's one of the limiting factors for you is that you do compete a lot so the week of peak week we'll, sometimes we'll do just circuits too and we'll yeah, do like we gotta let the body de-inflame yeah so she won't train legs like from probably tuesday or wednesday on usually like tuesday on that week so then you have you know wednesday to really sunday where there's no leg workouts, the intensity drops on Monday. So we're talking, you know, seven days plus Sunday, she's recovering. So that's a whole week. You take seven days of lower intensity and you times that by 14 shows, you know, you're at uh, 70 is 10. So we're at 200, we're at like two, wait, I'm sorry, 200, over a hundred days a year of that where you're like not a hundred percent as intense as you could be. Right. So that, yeah, it accumulates and that's going to be, so if your people are making that argument, Oh, that's why, well, there's, but also at the same time, she's close to the max of how much muscle she needs a little bit more muscle, not a lot more muscle. So right, two I don't need to take a whole year. Off yeah. Like, like two that. to three pounds. Like we can do that with just the, just a few weeks before, you know, like a couple months before like a, a limpy or something like that. So yeah, we're, we're, we're good on that. But, um, just so people know like the true eat to grow, how much you actually need and what the limiting factors are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, so with that being said, I guess that's what we got. Yeah. Is that it for today? I think that's all. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah, and thank everyone again for all your happy birthday wishes. I have way too many to reply, everyone. It was, like, really nice to feel the, feel the love from the peoples, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I posted my um, <laughs> annual <laughs> Adam birthday video, so you might want to check it out. We're never it's gonna pretty live. epic. We're never going to live that down. So it's on my Instagram, <laughs> Ashley K. Fit. Go to Ashley K. Fit. Look at the post where I'm in a red bikini and I'm standing next to Adam and then swipe <laughs> and then swipe. And you're going to see the most epic video you've ever seen. And I am so proud because I edited that myself on been, the flight home one day. And I've been posting it like every year for the past, like what, four 40, or five years. years. <laughs> I mean, Arthur, I, Arthur's got I don't know if you <laughs> saw it, but those editing skills were fire, weren't they? I, you know, the whole I, I might take Arthur's job one day. <laughs> those edits were... Psh.
I mean, I know. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew I was so talented she was, at she was this? Telling, she was like, I was laughing the whole time on the plane on the way home. I probably looked like a freak. Like. <laughs> we were, so this, we were in this, we were in this area where there wasn't much to do. And somehow we South, took this. Was it South Dakota or something? Yeah. South? Yo, South Dakota. South something? Sioux Falls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There wasn't like much to do the there. The corn town. Yeah, we're in the corn town. And then um, Ashley took, she had like a half half hair, hair piece hair piece and then she, she put it on my head in like the front and then we took a picture and then we just started for some reason he we embodied so a new character <laughs> we started we just started walking all over town with it and like just i i, I can't believe i even did that but it's <laughs> <laughs> he embodied fabio I've done like, the inspiring instagram model i've done like two that one time i let you put makeup on me too like oh. i've done like a couple of things that are like well how did i even get there yeah I, you know <laughs> You know, you, you know, I've, I'm secretly like Ashley's like kid brother that she just messes with all the time. I like when you're playing Fabio too. You truly live that character the entire day. Even yeah. like when the camera wasn't on, on, you were like at Starbucks ordering with that. And then you were FaceTiming someone and you're like, excuse me. I, you know, it was my mom. Me. It was my mom. And she was like, I think. I, I just wish I could be proud of you, son. <laughs> I just wish you'd give me give me something. Oh my gosh, right. good times. All right, I'll, I'll be posting that one in three hundred and uh, sixty yeah, days. Sixty days. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.